This year, most of us have been given the option to start working from home. While this may be commonplace now, we'll be talking to someone who's been working from home through his online business since 2017. How can you start your own online business from home? Join us today as we learn from this former employee who's helped others start and grow their businesses through the seemingly simple science of email marketing. Hey everyone, so we're starting off today's vlog by introducing to you Mr. Alan Ngo. He is the founder and president of Digital Solopreneur. Digital Solopreneur actually helps out existing and aspiring businesses to grow their business through email marketing. Welcome to the show, Alan. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the invite, Mark. It's exci- exciting to talk to you again after a long time. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I think it's been a few years. <laughs> so, did I get that right, Alan? So, maybe you can tell uh, more people about your home-based business. Yeah, definitely. So, I mainly sell digital products, mostly educational. For example, like ebooks, online courses, webinars, membership sites. Some of them, my own. I do trainings as well. I help and entrepreneurs, startups. Um, grow their business with email marketing but at the same time i also do this as an affiliate actually that's how i got started selling other people's product because when i started as a side hustler and i didn't even know how to to create my own offer so i i use emails to sell other people's stuff and that's how i started to learn how to sell via the internet so to those who haven't watched anything on my channel i've actually started a series on how to escape your nine to five I started with my first episode and I talked about how I escaped my 9 to 5 to live in Palawan. And I invited Alan today because he's also joining us from a 9 to 5 corporate background. So, can you tell us more what you were doing as your 9 to 5 um, years ago? It seems like a lifetime ago, but um, it, it was in backing. We handle um, account openings for our OFW brothers and sisters. Um, abroad so yeah and it was um, it was fine actually um, I really enjoyed I really learned a lot during that time as a banker were you actually working on email marketing already or was it something completely left field of what you were doing before that's a great question actually I, it had zero to do with what I was doing at work if current me went back in time and I told him what I'm doing you now believe so, it. Right? so that I don't think I'll believe myself Right, so that's yeah, I, that's how far what I'm doing right now from my job, my da- job description, uh, making a living writing emails. Right? So that that's the farthest from my imagination. Like, I mean, when we were growing up, there wasn't even internet. Right? J- just the idea of being able to make a living in at home, like <laughs> wearing wearing shirts and shorts, right? Totally not the path that I imagined I'll do. So can you tell us how you got into blogging, how you got into email marketing at the start? I'll try to give you the condensed version, but basically it, it came to a point where I was, I guess professionally and personally, it came to a toxic point in my life. Um, it's what we call like the quarter life crisis, right? So, <laughs> so one thing led to another, and I found myself applying for a scholarship to study in China. Um, it's from the Gokungwei Brothers Foundation, and I was blessed enough to pass the qualification. So that was kind of my sign that it it was uh, time for a change. From there, so after that, it was around I would say around ten months. So I came back here, and I was now part of the unemployment rate of the Philippines. So. <laughs> Because of that, um, I was I was still trying to to apply online. Um, then companies don't get back to you right away, and I, I just thought type in the magical words on Google like how to make money online. <laughs> so that's when I discovered Odesk. So now I think it's called Upwork. I was surprised. Um, I was able to pull in like times three of my net pay. I was really surprised because. The work is so much simpler. I didn't have to leave home. Um, sometimes, to be honest, I even forget to take a bath because every minute counts. So, maximize your time. And I, yeah, maximize the time. Um, that started my my journey towards um, starting online businesses, looking for ways to generate income because that was a short-term project. Mm-hmm. So after that, I had to look for something else. Mm-hmm. 
So because of this uh, this short time project that was paying you a, a handsome amount uh, at that time, um, you started to get into email marketing and research basically. The main thing that that did on top of, of course, the compensation is open my mind on the possibilities. I did jump right away into email marketing. So I mm-hmm. we had a project for the scholarship for the foundation that funded us to create a project that would that would give back basically what we learned from the scholarship. And I started a, a website um, sharing my knowledge, promoting the opportunities if you can speak Mandarin Chinese. So I did that as my project for, for the foundation. But at the same time, it's also me testing out online marketing, like blogging, social media posting. And it was really only when I started sending out emails to a newsletter to my subscribers. That's the time that I started earning because I did that on and off um, as a side hustle, as a side hustle. And um, I didn't really earn for a couple of years. It was only when I promoted an ebook from a friend, a friend I discovered, met online. Um, so his book, I like the title of his book because he spelled it. He's, he's actually Caucasian who's teaching okay. people how to learn Mandarin Chinese. So the title of his book was Chinese, C-H-I-N, E-A-S-E. So easy, right? Chinese. So it was very witty. And I, I sent that email, not thinking much about it. Then the next day I saw sales coming in. I was super surprised. And I think my first ever sale was around $8. And just from that email and just continuously, I guess, sending out emails to my subscribers, it kept coming in. And that was really eye-opening for me because when I was doing this as a side hustle, and it was around the time that I was about to get married. So just the wedding preparation, it's really toxic. So it made me focus on the aspect of my business that would give me the best ROI. And the good thing is I can pre-program these emails ahead of time. So I don't have to write emails every time. And this is not emails I sent via Gmail. So these are, I use a software to send these emails, right? So so that what made a lot of sense for me because in many ways, the, the business itself is automated. Basically, uh, you had a side project. You had a friend who, who you were helping sell his books and you basically focused and honed in on email marketing, which I guess would be the most cost effective. This, this was your foray into email marketing. How did you actually get into it? Did you learn? Did you go through seminars? Yeah, great question. Actually, I, I was just scouring on the internet, looking to find ways on how to do it. I just learned it online, different sites. Um, I guess where I started off was copyblogger.com was one of the sites that I, I visited. So e- email marketing is one of the things that I tried eventually because um, what really spoke to me was was the fact that when you build audiences via your blog, social media, Facebook groups, etc., you don't have ownership of the platform, right? Unlike emails, if you have that their emails, you, you own that database. And I've heard of horror, yeah. And I've heard of horror stories of people like getting banned from social media platforms. Some platforms get make you get get you banned from what whatever reason. And you you're powerless for doing that. Um, you have to build it on some build your future on something you can control, right? You can't just um, hope that. You can play good with Zuckerberg and everyone else. Correct, correct. So, yeah, because uh, yeah, in social media, the algorithm keeps changing, the the rules keep changing. The, the beautiful thing about email, it's it's always been there, and and the rules uh, they also change, but they're more constant, I guess. Right. So, having said that, I tried everything, and that seemed to be the one that uh, resonates with me. And also it resonates with my personality as well. More of the introverted type, but it doesn't mean that I don't have anything to say. And I think with emails, that's a way for me to express myself. Why not the anxiety of like in-person conversation? And I guess for me, being able to generate that, that amount of sales kind of also switch, flip a switch in my mind, because when I think of selling, I think of people who are very snappy dressers, very sharp in their clothes, um, great speakers, and very confident. That's my idea of somebody who can sell. Um, what what email helped me with is the idea that, oh, I, I can sell even if I'm just myself. Right? So that that's kind of the big, big shift in my mindset. 
yeah, I'm trying to map your uh, <laughs> the growth of your business. Yeah. So, were there other things, other clients that you eventually started getting? So, what I'm doing at this stage when I was selling the ebook was affiliate marketing. So basically, it's just reselling other people's products. So after I did that, I was already part of this um, stock stock market membership site that helps me invest in the stock market, giving me tips, etc. So that program also has an affiliate program. Basically, if you refer people to join the membership, you will get a commission. Since that's a bigger market, more than people who wants to speak Chinese, right? I tried to apply what I learned from that market to this one, the stock market. And that's when I was able to really scale the income because of course, just the sheer size of the market um, outweighs the one that I was in before. So when I did that, I I kind of got a bit of recognition because um, they would have like contests on who could refer the most, um, a part, like partner contests and my name would pop up and so that kind of got interest on how I was doing it. So that's when I got the idea of starting to teach email marketing. When I started out, I didn't have any plans of teaching this stuff. It's just something that I did and I didn't feel that I'm I'm that good to teach others. The way I, I entered this business is by trying. So I just tried it out as well. <laughs> so one thing led to another people, I was able to help people in. Yeah, it's, it kind of grew from there. So you would say that that was your big break. That's your claim to fame, so to speak. You could say that. <laughs> you were able to earn a lot from affiliate marketing through the Bo Sanchez 3D Rich Club. And and this is now the point wherein you put up your website uh, to help others with email marketing. So tell us about how you put that up. What was your journey and how were you getting your clients at this point? Was it basically the same? Of course, with any business, there's always pros and cons. There's always some downside. So as an affiliate marketer, the downside would be if, of course, if the old product owner decides to stop, stop the affiliate program or stop the product cold turkey, then then you're left with nothing to offer, right? So I decided to, perhaps maybe I can add this as an income stream. Like if there are any people interested, then I could teach them how. So from my initial list of um, people interested in the stock market, I would ask them like any of you are interested with online business, online marketing. So I started off with siphoning off a small portion of my original list um, on, that are interested in online marketing. So from there, I pre-sold my first course. I remember I pre-sold that in May and I told them that I will deliver it in July because I didn't want to do to create a product that nobody wants to buy anyway, right? So. I wanted so in reality I was profitable from day one. That's awesome. <laughs> because I already got I got I think eight, nine? Yeah. I I got I think I got eight or nine people to join the program at I think eight thousand a person. What I did for the future batch batches, I just got the recording of that and used that for sold that instead of the live training. So that that's how I got started. Yeah, and it, it's also fun to do emails because when we think of emails, perhaps other may think that it's spam. But the type of emails that we do is more conversational, more story based. So sometimes I would um, inject fun in it, like instead of writing an email coming from me, I would say, "Hey, um, today Alan is taking a break. I'm taking over." Then I'd say, "Hi, I'm Alan's keyboard." Like something like that something to make it fun right so so that's the kind of email that we write treat your email newsletter as not others would treat their database as an atm but if you treat them like humans like each name is a human then you can build that relationship that and the fact if you do that eventually when you send out emails people won't even look at the subject line they just see your name and they would like to open it right away so that's the kind of approach that we teach I, interesting to point also you mentioned that when you keep your one-to-one -one communication in your social media and your, your the popular uh, avenues you may tend to lose um, your database while in this case uh, you were able to actually harness that base and make it in into something else so yes they were interested in something bigger to the bigger channel which is the 3d rich club but you were able also to tap into something that would be interesting for them and basically that's how you snowballed um, the business that you, you you're currently doing 
Yeah, that's a great point that you made because I didn't promote online business to my subscribers who are interested in the stock in stock market because uh, I offered it to them and they had to sign up because it, that's something that's very important when we talk about emails is that it's permission based. You don't spam them and at the same time, you you're talking to you will have better conversions if you're people you're talking to people who are interested because others would be would be seduced by larger numbers like 10,000 subscribers but the real test is how many people open to your emails like if it's only 5% then sure you have 10,000 you're paying for 10,000 subscribers but the only people you only have in reality just 500 people listening to you and that's your actual email list <laughs> if, if if it all boils down to the essence that's the only number of people you have attention to so i would rather have a 1000 person subscriber if email list that's highly active than like 10,000 50,000 bloated list that's just full of junk for from that base uh you, you grew it and then i think at some point you also released a book is that is that right can you tell us more about how digital solopreneur grew from that start and where it is right now so for now we i do have ebooks but they are mostly for um for lead generation if the ebook is they found it valuable then they would consider my newsletter right my main offer right now is called inbox society so that's kind of my truly rich club but for email marketing right so that's my membership so my community where I teach lesson and also review my students' copy. So that's kind of my main um, community right now. But I also have smaller programs, webinars on 30-minute email writing so that the speed is, is an issue for others, but may, they may not be ready to join a membership site yet. So we, we kind of develop new offers depending on people's needs. So we have live sessions, live writing sessions, contests, challenges to make you execute yeah those those are our offerings right now so right now uh what are the types of clients or uh, businesses that you are able to help out with your your mentoring program uh, you said earlier that uh you you actually go through some coaching with them um right. are you able to disclose maybe just the nature of the different businesses that um that are availing of your uh services uh, most of them are either solopreneurs um people starting out selling digital products that's one. Some of them are freelancers who are learning how to do emails for their clients. And the third major um, market are salespeople. People in the insurance, real estate. Institutions have also reached out to me to do trainings in-house for them. You see your business growing more towards this, uh, you mentioned institutional, you know, sort of like consultative arrangement, or are you still seeing your base, digital solopreneurs, largely direct to market? For me, I think uh, I'm open to anything like the, whatever the, the market really wants. That's really what matters. Um, having said that, I have roadmap to further explore um, creating different offers because one of the things I guess that what we want, right? With I, I know that you have Airbnb in Palawan. I think because the, the nature of having passive income as well, right? So aside just working from home, because you can still work from home, but still feel like in prison if you don't control your hours. So I also want to create different offers that can I can I can sell without my direct involvement. Of course, opportunities to work with great individuals appear from time to time, but the, the main goal is really to create an, a business that can generate income without my direct involvement. Because of, I would rather spend that time playing with my kid, um, bonding with my, my wife, right? And I, my dream is really just to be happy. And I don't think, you know, killing myself to, to, to reach that is worth it. So for me, my main goal is to create direct-to-market offers, if possible, something that I can do passively. And yeah, and spend more time doing nothing. <laughs> it's great that you mentioned that because uh, yeah, I think I think a lot of people have the impression also that you know when you get into business it's because you're you really want more money or um, you really want more control. But really, uh, I like what you said. It, it's it's really more about the time that you get the the time to get to, to do the things that you want to do. I mean, and it's not completely you know chasing coin, chasing you know chasing bigger accounts. It's really also a good 
right. a lifestyle, having right. uh, having something passive. Um, so with that, um, I know you have a lot of tips for for uh, aspiring entrepreneurs and those escaping <laughs> wanting to escape the nine to five. I actually prepared this specifically for this interview because I know I know the target market. I know who you who you want to reach, and I think for me, the lie that's been peddled by a lot of people, and I I don't think it's done maliciously, but I think it can mislead people, and that's about pursuing your passion, right? Because I didn't pursue my passion, um, and I like the quote the quote given by like Scott Adams, the the creator of Dilbert, the Dilbert comic strip. So he said that um, in many ways, like. Success isn't caused by passion. It's actually the other way around. Right? If you experience success, normally passion will grow, passion will follow, and eventually passion can evolve. Right? So if you don't know your passion yet, it, it doesn't matter. So try different things out. And I think what's something that would be helpful for you is don't be trapped, aside from not being trapped about pursuing your passion, but treat this as an experiment. At the start, right? I know we are pursuing a side hustle that we eventually want for it to grow, but even experienced marketers, experienced entrepreneurs suffer failures, right? So failures will be an eventuality. So rather than fearing to the perfect, per, pursuing perfection, which holds you back from taking action, think of your side hustle as an experiment. Because if you think about it as an experiment, you allow yourself room to fail, right? And it's gonna be okay. Because if you pursue it like a business and it fails or it doesn't go the way you like it, it feels like a failure. You feel like you're a failure. When in reality, you can't you can't you can't prevent that, right? So might as well approach it as an experiment. So if it fails, that's part of the process. That's one step closer to success. So if there's one thing that you you I hope if you take out from this conversation, it's it's those two. Actually, me also like I like I don't have like a passion passion, but you you do have things that you're interested in, and then sometimes you just gotta find a way right. to not even monetize, but just to try things out, try to push it further, and um, that's what I've heard those I've interviewed. You know, sometimes you just gotta try and just put yourself out there and uh, allow yourself to make a mistake. Uh, it might not be a success, it might be a failure, but uh, you gotta put yourself out there and just you know and just try it out. Before we end the conversation, um, is there anything else that you would like to tell our listeners, our viewers, uh, where they can reach you? <laughs> yeah. If you want to continue the conversation, you can just visit digitalsolopreneur.com. I also have a Facebook group. Um, super fancy name, Email Marketing Philippines. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure you wouldn't miss that. So yeah, we can continue the conversation there. And yeah, I look forward to getting know of no more about you so thanks again alan for joining us it's been really wonderful to have you today and uh it's great for us to be able to see how we can pattern our home-based businesses now that this is the new normal yeah thank you thank you for inviting me it's been fun thanks for your time alan <laughs>